we believe that this message will be a blessing to you so I want you to stay glued and watch to the end and share to bless others this is Christocentric we have a lot of Apostle Eric Nyamiche's message on our platform kindly check them out thank you for watching stay blessed I want to start by talking about the importance of names importance of names because we are talking about the authority of the name of Jesus but let me establish one or two things about importance of names now when we talk about a name we are talking about a word or a combination of words by which a person place or thing a body or glass or any object of thoughts is designated, called, or known. So whether tangible or intangible, once you have a name for it, once you designate something for identification, then you are saying that that is the name of that thing, imaginary or real. See, God might have named Adam. Maybe he gave that name to him or, but what is very important is this. From the Garden of Eden, God bequeathed naming of things to mankind through Adam. So since Adam, we have been naming whatever we want to name. And so the authority to name or to give a name is in the hands of human beings. What this means is this. God wanted everything to be named. God wanted everything that is known to be named. And so he was not going to do that because by this time, we would not have been hearing God giving names even to our children. You needed to pray and ask God what name. But God said, you do the naming. You do the naming. Genesis 2 from 19 Genesis 2 from 19. Now the Lord God had formed out of the ground the wild animals and the bears in the sky. He brought them to the man to see what he would name them. And whatever the man called each living creature, that was its name. God accepted it. So the man gave names to all the livestock and bears in the sky and all the wild animals. But for Adam, no suitable helper was found. Now, so man began naming things from the Garden of Eden up to today. So we all like to be called by our names, our right names, of course. Um, you, you may have a nickname, but when you are a young person or a boy, and then your friends come home and they are calling you by your nickname, you just look at the face of your father. You realize that your dad and your mom, they are not too happy about that name because that is not what they want you to be responding to. And we all grow out of nicknames to your right and the proper name that was given to you. Um, so that is what we are identified with. Over seven point something billion of us, all of us have names, not just human beings. Other things that we associate with also have names. But a name, brothers and sisters, is not just for identification. All that a person is, is vested in his or her name. Very important. Your name is not just for identification, but all that you are is vested in your name. How many of you have heard of Mr. Bean? Yeah. You see that you are laughing. Mr. Bean is not here. But you mention the name and Mr. Bean zooms out of the name. Zooms out of whole this one. That is why you don't need Jesus to be here. His name is enough. All that he is, it is in his name, Jesus. Your name stands in for you. Sometimes you don't need to go to court. Your lawyer will just carry your name and defend the name. That's all. So you don't worry. Your body in court is not necessary because your name will stand in for you. You and your name, therefore, are one. You and your name are one. You and your name are one. 
You destroy a person's name and you destroy the person. Very important. You destroy a person's name and you destroy their fellow. So even God, Psalm 23 verse 3 says that he leads us in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. See how God wants to hallow the name. Jesus said we should hallow the name. And God wants us to walk in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. We are called Christians. So whatever you do, it affects the Christ. So sometimes people say, you said you are a Christian. You said you are a Christian. So when we walk in the path of righteousness, we hallow the name of God. And God, for his name's sake, wants us to walk in the path of righteousness. Because if you destroy a man's name, you have destroyed a fellow. So we need to carry ourselves well so that our names are not destroyed while we are still alive. Now, when you are alive and your name is destroyed, you could be useless. I want you to process that. Carry yourself well so that your name is not destroyed while you are still alive. There are certain people you mention their name and people think that, what is the use? And so please carry yourself well. Proverbs 21, verse 24. Proverbs 21, verse 24. The proud and arrogant person, Mocha is his name, behaves with insolent fully. A proud and arrogant person. And instead of calling him by Kofi Nyameche, they call him Mocha is his name. And he says that he behaves if insolent free. And so look at a proud and arrogant person. They are relegating him. They don't want him. Mocker is his name. Carry yourself well because of your name. Please carry yourself well because of your name. Proverbs 3, verse 3 and 4. Proverbs chapter 3, verse 3 and 4. Let love and faithfulness never leave you. What this means is that live by the principles of love and faithfulness. Bind them around your neck. Write them on the tablets of your heart. Live by this principle. Write them on the tablet of your heart. Bind them on your neck. And then look at verse 4. Let's read together verse 4. Then you will win favor and good name in the sight of God and man. You see, we need to work like that. We have favor before God and man. Um, there was this pastor of mine um, who was being harassed a bit by the, some auditors of our church. And then he called me because the auditors have hinted him that they were going to carry some information to me. And he wanted to report himself before they arrived. So when he called me, I was just around the corner. And so I said, uh, then I'm coming to the mission house. I got to the mission house. I asked the auditors what the problem was. And then they told me that this pastor has gone to buy uh, something, but he doesn't have receipts to prove it. And this is a young pastor. I, when he saw me, he started <laughs> weeping. That they say, I've done this. I've not done Even God knows. Don't limit what people should know only to God. Let human beings know. You see, because how can God be your, your defense? We are talking about receipt. You say God knows. And as for these auditors, they want evidence. So carry yourself well so that you don't say that even God knows that I don't have anything to do with her. He says that carry yourself well so that you have favor before God and Man, carry yourself well. Remove every suspicion from the way you deal with the opposite sex, the way you carry yourself at the workplace. Because um, if you destroy your name while you are still alive, it can cost you. You could be useless. You could be useless. But there are certain things that are better than money, like good health. Is better than money. Peace is better than money. Wisdom is better than money. But the greatest is a good name. It's a good name. 
or a great name. Proverbs 22, verse 1. A good name is more desirable than great riches. There are certain people who are fabulously rich, but nobody respects them because they know the source of their money and people don't respect them. To be esteemed is better than silver or gold. A good name is more desirable than silver or gold is better than money. A good name does not only bring security. A good name is a purchasing power. It doesn't only assure security, but it is a purchasing power. Why am I saying that? Your, when your name is great, it does things for you. Yeah. That name alone does things for you. Now, you normally will not see people with great names in the banking halls, yet they redraw money. And for some of them, they will wait till around 4.30 when they are sure that banks have closed. And then they will call. Now, when they call and you are there, and you, there you take the receiver. The first thing such people do is to mention their name. I'm so, so, and so. You realize that even though the fellow is not there, you the one who is receiving this call, you are not fit to discuss with him. Then he says, so can I call in the manager? He said, please do. Then the manager comes. Hello, sir, can I help you? Then this man with a great name will say that, I hope you have not closed when he knows that you have closed. And then the manager says, no, no, sir, no, sir. I said, okay, I want to send my, my driver to fetch some money. Uh, would that be okay? He said, yes, I'll wait. Um, can he come in an hour's time? You know they have closed. But in the not we microphone. Now, he said, oh, yes, sir, even if it is two hours. Yeah. You see, the man is not there, but his name is fetching things for him. That is what great names are. Please work on your name. That is what great names can do. You see, when God was introducing Abraham into greatness, in Genesis chapter 12 from verse 1, the Bible says this, Genesis 12 from verse 1, the Lord has said to Abraham, go from your country, your people, and your father's household to the land I will show you I will make you into a great nation, and I will bless you. I will make your name great, and you will be a blessing. Sometimes we tend to figure out and then make sure that uh, maybe people say that God bless Abraham. There are seven blessings in this. So number one, the blessing number one is uh, I will make you into a great nation, one. And I'll bless you. Don't, don't just put in things in scripture. See, what is simple here is this. I will make you into a great nation and I will bless you. It doesn't mean the first one is sec- different from the second one. No. I will make your name great and you will be a blessing. Once your name is great, that name brings some blessings to you as well as those who associate with that name. Sometimes, somebody will say that I know this man, he's my father, he's my uncle. And because of that name, it brings the person favors. So when your name is great, certainly you'll be a blessing. Have I communicated? I'll make your name great and you'll be a blessing. When your name is great, you'll be a blessing. It opens doors and patches for the bearer of the name and others associated to that name in one way or the other, things that even money cannot buy, like favor. There is no shop here in Accra, neither will you find in any part of the world where we sell favor. Money cannot purchase that, but great names can buy that for you for free. Great names can give you favor. A name that leaves the bearer your name will outlive you. You will die and your name will still be living on. So live like that. Even when you are dead, your name can still cause effect. That is why people say that Nkrumah never dies. Nkrumah is dead. But people say he never dies because of the greatness of his name. 
how much powerful and honored is the name of Jesus who rose from the dead and is alive forevermore. Jesus is not dead. He is alive. Brothers and sisters, a great name is end. A great name is end. You need to invest into a name to make it great. You really need to invest into a name to make it great. You need to work hard to achieve a great name. The authority of Jesus' name was not conferred on him. He gained it as due return. He gained it as due return. The name was not just conferred. He gained it as due return. Philippians 2 from verse 5. Philippians 2 from verse 5. In your relationships with one another, have the same mindset as Christ Jesus. Verse 6. Who, being in very nature God, did not consider equality with God something to be used for his own advantage. Rather, he made himself nothing by taking the very nature of a servant, being made in human likeness, and being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself by becoming obedient to death, even death on the cross. Now, my interest is in verse 9. Shall we read together? Therefore, it's okay. Therefore, in consequence of that, as a result, God exalted him. Now the King James will say, God also exalted him as doing something in return from what Jesus has done. So therefore, in consequence of that, God exalted him to the highest place and gave him the name that is above every name. So the name was not just conferred on him. He earned it. When we are talking about the name Jesus, the reason why demons bow, because they know that he earned the name. It was not just conferred on him. Therefore God also, therefore God also exalted him God also exalted him. What did he do for him? Now God exalted him and gave him the name. So when God exalted him, he didn't give him a crown. He didn't give him part of his creation. He gave him a name. And it is now the name that is above every name. Hebrews chapter 1 from verse 1. Shall we go to Hebrews chapter 1? about the name he inherited from God. Are we together? Fine. In the past, God spoke to our ancestors through the prophets at many times and in various ways, verse 2. But in these last days, he has spoken to us by his son, whom he appointed heir of all things, and through whom also he made the uh, Now, verse 3. The sun is the radiance of God's glory and the exact representation of his being, sustaining all things by his powerful. After he had provided purification for sins, he sat down at the right hand of the majesty in heaven. Now the big one, verse 4. Shall we shout it? So he became as much superior to the angels as As the name he has inherited is superior to the earth. Now, when you go to church, don't disturb yourself with angel worship. I saw this angel. I saw that angel. See Jesus. The name he has inherited is superior to the earth. If you read on it, the name is superior to that of angels, superior to that of Moses, superior to that of Abraham. And if you say Moses and Abraham, it is enough for the Jews. There should be no other name that should be compared to the name. And this name he has inherited. From who? Who gave him this name? And what name did he inherit? Back to Philippians 2 verse 10. Philippians 2 verse 9. What name did he inherit? 
that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth. You see that the name that he inherited is what? Jesus. But you want to wonder, why didn't he give him a name like Yakubu or some Muhudius name so that we know that he has inherited the name? This name was spoken to the mother, was even predicted, was, was suggested by the angel Gabriel. He was named even before he was conceived. And so he is simple Jesus. And the name Jesus is not a sophisticated name. It's like saying Joshua in, in Hebrew. Now let's go to Colossians 4, verse 11. Colossians 4, verse 11. Jesus, who is called Yastus, also sends greetings. So there is this man called Jesus. So the name Jesus was a common name. That is why Peter and even the angel, they were careful to say that this Jesus we are talking about is the one that heals from Nazareth. And I don't think that even in Nazareth he was the only Jesus. So Jesus was a common name. So when God lifted him and he gave him the name Jesus, it is as he gave him the same name that his father named him when he was born, that common name. But what makes the difference? The president of the Republic of Ghana, Nana Adudanku Akufuadu, when he was campaigning, he campaigned with the same name. I'm sure when he went to school, this was the name he went to school with. When he was campaigning, wanting to be president, he did it with this same name. Then he won the election. From the day he won the election up to today, you cannot say anything at all against this name and go scot-free. People will take you on. Before you say, Jack, you are somewhere. Why is the name now different? Because the whole of the authority of Ghana backs that name. He is the president of the republic. The same person now walks into a hall. And then we, all of us will have to stand up. So we say, God bless our homeland Ghana. He sits before we all sit down. But you may be his classmate. You may know him as Nana. But you cannot joke with that name. The whole of the authority of Ghana backs that name. And when we are talking about Jesus, there was no need to change the name. God, the whole of heaven backs that name. The whole of heaven now is behind the name Jesus. The whole of the authority of heaven backs that name. See, the value of your certificate depends on the authority who conferred it on you. If you say you have PAD, no problem. And then they ask you, where did you get your PAD? says, from the University of Nkoko. Say, what? University of Nkoko? So, what that means is that your PAD cannot fly anywhere. We don't get PADs from the University of Nkoko. No. So, the value of his name, the greatness of his name, depends on who gave him the name. Now, verse 9 again, Philippians 2. 9 again, Philippians 2. Therefore, God exalted him and gave him the name. So this name was given to him by the supreme being, the king of all the gods, the creator and the owner of all things, the king of kings and the lord of lords, gave him the name Jesus. Gave him the name Jesus. If God gave him that name, it is superior than any other name. He qualifies to bear that name too because he earned it. See, the authority of the name of Jesus is over all things. It's over all things. Hebrews 1 verse 2. The authority of the name of Jesus is over all things. Hebrews 1 verse 2. But in these last days, he has spoken to us by his son, whom he appointed heir of how many things? 
all things. All things. We are talking about the name Jesus. The authority of that name is over everything. All things. The authority of the name of Jesus transcends all boundaries. See, when you are president of a republic, and let's say you leave Ghana and you get to the borders, Aflao, you want to go to Togo. When the nose of your car enters Lome, your authority ceases. You don't have the same authority in Togo. No. No, you don't have the same authority. But this one, his government is on his shoulders. What that means is that wherever he gets to, he rules. And for him, he doesn't even have to get to a destination. He fills the whole earth. And his authority transcends boundaries. When we are talking about the name of Jesus, we are talking about the one whose authority transcends boundaries and the limits of thoughts. It is above all and independent of all. The authority is above all and it is independent of all. It transcends limits of thought. Philippians 2 verse 10. That at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth. And every tongue should acknowledge that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of the Father. Hallelujah. Are we together? The authority of the name of Jesus is superior to any name that is named. Any name that is named. To the names like Moses, Abraham, I've said it. But it is not all. Any name like cancer. That this is superior to it. Names like death. He is dead. And the name of Jesus has power over death. It has power over life. He can decide to call the living to the grave and call those in the grave back to life. If you like, you can ask Lazarus. He will explain some of these things to you well. He calls some to the grave and then he calls some out of the grave. The name of Jesus does not only carry authority, it carries power as well. See, there is difference between authority and power. And many times we use them interchangeably. They are synonymous in any way. But there is difference between authority and power. Authority is the mandate to perform. So the name of Jesus has authority. It has the mandate to perform. But power is the ability to perform. Both are vested in his name. Now I can come to church here. This is not the church of Pentecost. So when I come, I should respect a very reverend. I will have to ask, please, where do I sit? I have come with some power as the head of the church, but I don't have authority here. So I have to ask for where I should sit because there is authority here. So my authority does not transcend my bodies. I need to ask. But Jesus has authority. And his authority in it is power. The ability to perform. The ability to perform. The ability to perform. Let's remind ourselves of what happened at the beautiful gate. What happened at the beautiful gate. Acts chapter 3. For the sake of time, I'll start reading from verse 6. Then Peter said, Silver and gold I do not have, but what I have I give you. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, walk. Now, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, walk. He commands this man to walk in an authority. Let's look at what happened, verse 7. Taking him by the right hand, he held him up. And instantly, the man's feet and ankles became strong. Instantly, something happened in the man's feet and ankle. He jumped up to his feet and began to walk. Then he went with them into the temple courts, 
walking and jumping and praising God. When all the people saw him walking and praising God, they recognized him as the same man who used to sit begging at the temple gate called Beautiful. And they were filled with wonder and amazement at what had happened to him. Something has happened to him. He says, this is what I have. In the name of Jesus, he used the authority and power entered the man's ankle. And the man jumped to his feet. Now, the next day, something happened. They were called before the Sahindri. Acts chapter 4, verse 7. Let's listen to what the Sahindri asked them. Then they had Peter and John brought before them and began to question them. Shall we read that part? By what power or what name did you do this? Now, these leaders of the Jews, they have heard of how this man had been healed by the mention of the name Jesus. And instead of saying that, what happened to him? They, they asked this question. Shall we go back to verse 7? Ask for. They had Peter and John brought before them and began to question them. By what power? And they didn't say, and, but they said, or what name? The understanding is this. Names have power. So a certain power might have done that or a certain name might have done that. So names have power. And in the name of Jesus, it's not just a name with authority. Invest in the name is power. In the name is great power. Then Peter had to respond. Verse 10. Then know this, you and all the people of Israel, it is by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom you crucified, but whom God raised from the dead, that this man stands before you healed. It is by the name of Jesus that this man stands before you healed. The name of Jesus has power. Even as you are listening to the sound of my voice, if there's anyone sick here, in the name of Jesus, be healed. Be healed. The name has power. Over demons and circumstances. That is why we don't have to disturb our members by just magnifying the powers of demons. See, this one, uh, there's ancestral cares, this, this fellow, this witch in your home who is disturbing you. Major in the power that is in us. He that is in us is greater than he that is in the world. Don't let us flood our churches with demon mentality it will not make any difference rather build the power that is in you you see we all have challenges in our homes but you see don't worry about who is a witch in your home yeah just level in the name of jesus it has authority and power it has authority and power the name see and this is released in the preaching of the word the authority and the power is released to the preaching of the word. Now, this name has been made available for us for the salvation of mankind. So, all of us who are here, it is not enough just to know about the authority vested in the name of Jesus, nor the power that it is in his name. People are suffering. They need to be saved. And God wants you to use that name, the authority to liberate them. And so, in Matthew chapter 28, he asked the disciples to go because all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to him. We should go and make disciples of all nations, teaching and baptizing them. And signs and wonders will follow us because of the name. So God wants us to save mankind and humanity. Peter said there is no name given among men by which one should be saved. And that salvation is not just bringing people to faith. Deliverance, delivering them from shackles that hold them bandage, it is in the power of the name. And God is expecting you to go out using the name, preaching in the name of Jesus, and signs and wonders will follow you too. The message of the preaching in the name of Jesus is one, that Jesus is our propitiation. 
is the only name that heaven asserts for deliverance. It is the name that hell recognizes. One day the demons ask these sons of Stephen, Paul I know, Jesus I know, who are you? The name of Jesus, it is the only name that God has given us for our deliverance. Now lastly, the name of Jesus is a strong tower. Proverbs 18.10. I'll read this and then I'll bring my message to a close. The name of Jesus is a strong tower. Shall we read together? The name of the Lord. Hold it. Um, we used to sing this song. Abandon Daniel. Yeah. Yeah. Umuna hutufu Yina benya faude Abandende ne uye oh. Now I see, let me just say something about this song. Originally, we were not singing it. Abandende ne uye hoa. No. That is not how we had it. Abandende is not Yehoah. Abandon then Jehovah is God. But the name of the Lord is the strong tower, not the Lord. So when we are singing Abandon then Jehovah and the devil hears it, he knows that it's theologically wrong and that it doesn't achieve anything. Because the name of the Lord is the strong tower. The righteous runs into it and they are saved. So this song originally, we used to sing it, Abandon Day Neu Yehoah Din. Womuna Hotsufu Yina Jane Betua. Womuna Hotsufu Yina Benya Fahude. Abandon Day Neu Yehoah Din. You see, when God, Yehoah, was given to mankind, they gave him a name, and that name is the name of the Lord, Jesus Christ. It has pleased the Lord that the whole power of the Godhead dwells in our Lord, and that name is Jesus. The righteous runs into it, and they are safe. I want you to know that there's so much security in the name of Jesus. Once you are in him, you are saved. And remain in him. Because outside his name is danger. I pray that God will help us. So that at least the little that I've said, may the Lord breathe upon it and turn it great in your heart. That from today forward, you will know the authority that is in the name of Jesus. And know and go beyond that this name does not just have authority. It has what? Power as well. But we should go preaching the name because the name of the Lord is a strong tower. God bless us all.